Well, we begin tonight with U.S. Surgeon General Dr. Jerome Adams. Dr. Adams, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I know Hi, you Martha. have long days and uh, a lot of work ahead of you. Hello there. Um, so first of all, I want to ask you about some breaking news just moments ago with regard to someone testing positive in Vice President Pence's office. Can you tell us anything about that? Well, one thing I can tell you is that White House medical staff was fantastic. They called me right away. They said, this is a person who you did not have any contact with, and you are at low to no risk. And uh, they asked me if I had any symptoms, and I said no. And so they told me I didn't need to be tested. And so I just want to really say thank you to the White House medical staff. Uh, they were very professional. And uh, we'll continue to hear about more cases across the country. And it's important that we all remain calm and that we remember that if you didn't have direct exposure, if you don't have symptoms, then uh, you don't need to be tested, but you should always talk to your medical provider. So what did you make of that exchange that we just played between um, reporter Peter Alexander and the president, sort of this debate over whether or not the White House is putting too rosy a spin on things at this point? What do you say to that? Well, the messaging has always been challenging because we're trying to, to give people optimism, mm -hmm. but also encourage them to be cautious. And it's why, from the beginning, I've always right. said we need to prepare, but not panic. And you see panic in some places, and that results in people hoarding. That results in people pulling knives on each other over hand sanitizer. Uh, we do mm -hmm. need to calm people down. And from my experience, that's what the president has always tried to do, is calm people down, mm -hmm. while also really helping people understand this is serious and we all need to lean into it. And you saw that earlier this week with the 15 days to stop the spread guidelines that the right. president put out saying, look, America, it's go time. So do you think the president is being overly optimistic about the anti-malarial drug and remdesivir, which have seen some positive results in some trials? Well, I wasn't at today's press conference. We're practicing social distancing, but I did see it. And I was, quite frankly, fascinated at the stories that came out of that because there was no, uh, there, there was no disconnect between what Tony Fauci was saying and what the president was saying. The president was saying, number one, we have two drugs out there. And he is optimistic that, and hopeful, based on some of the studies and what they've heard, that these drugs will be helpful to people. And it's why we're providing them for, or for people on a compassionate use basis. But Tony Fauci appropriately said, we need to um, make sure we're following up the data, that we see the studies, so that we can actually tell people for certain down the road whether this is effective or not. So those two aren't incongruous. That's science. We're hopeful, but we're well, also What do you cautious. tell people when they want—I'm sorry. What do they tell people? You tell people when they say, you know, when will these be sort of in common use? When we can, when anyone who is, you know, in the hospital with breathing trouble would be given these drugs right away? What's the time well, frame? Well, that's a fantastic question, and we've always told people we have kind of a three-tiered response. Uh, and I'll go backwards. Tier three is vaccines. We know it will likely be next year before we get a mm -hmm. vaccine for this disease. Uh, tier two is actually looking at therapeutics, uh, things like remdesivir. Like, uh, like the drugs that you heard about today. And we've always said it will probably be midsummer before we have enough data to be able to say uh, for certain whether or not these drugs are promising. They're now being made available in record time and on a compassionate use basis, just in case. But tier one is actually mitigation. And when you look at this outbreak and all other outbreaks, you don't solve these outbreaks the first go round with therapeutics or with vaccines. You solve them by social distancing. We saw that in the 1918 yeah. flu outbreak. We're seeing it in, in uh, Singapore. We saw it in South Korea and in China. It's making sure you stay six feet away from people. It's the president's guidelines, making sure you are in groups of less than 10, making sure you're pulling down unnecessary yeah. travel. I, I think everybody's... Yes. Well, I, I hope everybody knows that, but uh, it's funny because when you look well, on no, TV, I, when, you, when you drive around, I'm not saying that they know it. I'm just saying, People don't seem yeah. to be getting it in some places. So it's important to reemphasize wow. those, those social mitigation no, techniques. No, it is. I, I totally agree. And I think it's, you know, I'm, I was just going to say, I think people have, are really trying to adapt to it um, they fairly are trying. quickly They are overall. trying. And I, I do want to give America instances. credit. And we've been hard on our millennials and our Gen Zs. But a lot of them out there are doing great things. And I just want to give a shout out yeah. to, uh, to the folks who gave blood after I put out my announcement at the press mm. conference yesterday, uh, letting people know yeah. that there is a shortage of blood in this country, but it is safe to give blood. You know, we've got good people in this country, and I'm confident that they will rally and do the right thing. All right, let's put up this chart that shows the acceleration in the last 14 days, which is dramatic. But that was, it was expected, right? Because we're seeing so many more people being tested now. 
Well, exactly. We've seen a, a big increase in testing this week, and that's resulted in more positives. But we also need to be, be uh, straight about it with, with everyone. We are where Italy was just a few weeks ago in terms of numbers, and we have to make a decision. Do we want to go the trajectory of Italy, or do we want to look more like South Korea, like Singapore? And what South Korea and Singapore did mm -hmm. was aggressive social mitigation. The scientists on the task force shared that information with the vice president and the president. And they said, let's put out these guidelines right now to give states the tools that they need and yeah. the cover that they need to make some of these tough decisions you're seeing governors making. So I, I said uh, that we had a couple of questions. There were actually a lot of really good questions that came in on I Twitter when we Twitter. shared there were with some people that you would be there. with us tonight. Oh, good. So here's one from Stephen. Has the federal government identified each of the hospitals in the United States with an immediate, if not urgent, need for protective gear for their doctors and nurses? Have they identified them, uh, Surgeon General, and how long yes. will it be before all those needs are met? That is a great question, and I am still a practicing physician. I practice at Walter Reed. These physicians are calling me directly. Mm -hmm. What I want you to know is that a couple of big things happened this week. Uh, you had the, the bill that was passed that the president signed, which, which uh, allows 30 more million masks a month from 3M and Honeywell to be made available for medical use. You also saw the Department of Defense uh, uh, donate from their stockpile ventilators and masks. And uh, importantly, FEMA went to level one. And, and Folks don't understand, but what that means mm -hmm. is that FEMA can work directly with the states the way they work with them through hurricanes, and they have this down to a science to make sure they figure out who needs what and to get it to them. Because right now, one of the problems is uh, the majority of the supplies yeah. are going out into the open market, and they may not be going to where they need to be. It's why we also put out guidelines to pull down elective procedures yeah. this week. We don't need people in one part of the country using PPE to do right. elective cases and cosmetic surgery while people in New York or in Washington are suffering because they can't actually take yeah. care of themselves to take care of the patients. I'm going to squeeze in one more. If you could give me a, if you're able to give me a quick answer, I'd appreciate it. This is from Lars. Testing positive for coronavirus means that we need to isolate at home. But since we are already isolating at home anyway, what is gained by getting the test? Well, what's gained by getting the test is that hopefully you will be even more vigilant because we know that people aren't always following those social mitigation guidelines. But also, if you go into the hospital, if you get sicker, it's important for your health care providers to know so that they can appropriately use PPE and protect themselves. One of our tenets is we need to protect Great. the people who are out there protecting the people. And I want the health care providers out there and the first responders to know we are trying as hard as we can to make sure we are getting you PPE where you need it. Uh, as your Surgeon General, Good. I still practice, and I've got your back. We are leaning into this. Dr. Adams, thank you very much. Good to have you with us tonight. Keep up the good work. I know everybody's really working overtime and hard on this, and we really appreciate you taking some time with us tonight. Thank you, Martha. Coronavirus.gov. And, and again, I'm happy to answer more questions on Twitter. Great. We'll look forward to it. Thank you so much, Dr. Jerome Adams, the Surgeon General.